And let's talk about triggers again for a moment, because in working with people as a psychotherapist over 20 years, as well as my own personal journey, I realized that most people have very specific triggers based on extremely upsetting, if not traumatic, experiences they have had in life, most likely early childhood. So, for example, if you had authority figures that were dangerous or not supportive, you might overreact in a situation with a boss who's an authority figure or maybe even a doctor, right? And the relationship gets triggered and it's like this emotional memory is in our brain with no understanding of time, no understanding that the situation is different because the pattern is the same. Our emotional brain operates on patterns. So we have our amygdala triggering danger, danger, and our emotional response being pattern-based. Been here before, this isn't going to go well. I better freeze, or I better run, or I better fight, right? For some people, driving on a crowded highway is a complete trigger that could take over their entire brain. For others, it might be public speaking or a performance-based issue. And for many of us, many, many, many of us, the amygdala is hijacked the most in our most important relationships. So I think we are wired to be connected to other people and to see that connection as a matter of survival. But it isn't a matter of immediate, right now, I have to run away from the saber-toothed tiger survival. It's longer-term connection type relationship. And yes, it contributes to our happiness, but probably not to our immediate survival. And this is one reason that once, particularly when people get married, the fights can become so much more explosive because any threat to the relationship, any threat to the connection can be seen as a survival-based threat. The amygdala takes over and then it just doesn't go well from with either person. 